Lynn Kelly here doing a follow-up Q&A to an online school visit I had last week with students at Joyce Kilmer Elementary School in Buffalo Grove, Illinois. And our visit was uh, already planned to be kind of a short one, just about a 20-minute Q&A session before they had to leave for lunch. And then it was cut short because of some technical problems. So I felt bad I didn't get to answer everyone's questions that day. So I asked them to email me the questions we did not get to, and I would answer those for them. And I decided then that it would be more fun to answer the questions on a video instead of just emailing the answers back. And that way, it seems like a better follow-up to the online school visit that they'd, they'd already had planned. So, and then also, um, those of you who I wasn't, you know, visiting with that day, other um, schools, other classrooms, if your students have read Chained and they might have the same questions, you could certainly use this video and uh, later ones if I do them to answer their questions. And a quick introduction for those who don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, this novel, Chained, that I wrote about an elephant keeper in India is what these uh, students read, third through fifth grade students. And yes, I'm holding up a postcard because I strangely enough do not have a copy of my own book at home. But looks a lot like this, but taller and about 200 pages thicker than this postcard. I do, though, have a copy of the Indian edition, which is also lovely. This was published in India last year, and they have many languages in India, but this one is published in British English, uh, which is one of the languages they use, especially in schools. So British English, if you like your words like color and favorite with a letter U in them, then this would be the book for you. And hopefully soon I will be getting another edition because this one is coming out very soon in Japan. This is the Japanese cover of Chain, which I also love. So on to the questions that we did not get to that day. And maybe a couple that I did answer because they do come up a lot. Uh, the first one was, what kind of paper do you write on? Often I use the laptop when I'm uh, writing a story, like when I'm drafting a story, but I do like to work things out, like brainstorm and work through some problems that come up on paper. But I don't use any special kind. It's just a notebook, you know, something like this or like this, which you can find anywhere, and they don't cost much. I like them a little smaller, I have found, because then they're easier to carry with me, and I can take these out and use them, do, do a little writing in them if I have some free time. And I carry one that's even smaller with me usually, so if I hear some dialogue I think would be good in this story, or I get an idea or something like that, then I can jot it down in here, and I have that when I get home. Uh, I have found that the notebooks should not be too pretty, like this one, for example which is gorgeous and is made of bamboo paper, has leaves on the cover. I've had this for several years, and how much have I used it? I have not written on one page. It's so pretty, I don't want to scribble in it. So it just sits on my desk and looks pretty. So plain notebooks for brainstorming and such. Uh, the next question is, what made you become an author? Really, it was not until I got the idea for this book that I decided to to write one. And I'd always been a reader. I've always loved books, but I hadn't thought about writing my own until I got the idea for this novel. And I'll talk about that briefly because that, that is a question students ask a lot, is where the idea for Chained came from. I was at a presentation, nothing to do with elephants, but the speaker said that apparently if a young elephant is caught and tied up or chained up, it will struggle really hard to break free. But then when it gives up, it gives up forever. And you saw this happen in one of the early chapters of Chained um, when they first capture an elephant and take her to the circus grounds. So the speaker's point was, don't be like an elephant if you fail at something, which was a perfectly good point to make. Um, I was thinking of it more literally uh, about what a cool elephant story that could be. And I was teaching at the time for this, um, these same age groups, uh, about third through fifth grade, and thought that could be a cool story to write down and tell my students at school and... If it's any good, maybe I could figure out how to get a book published. Um, and, you know, obviously it grew from there. So it just started from that idea, and I'm really happy I was there for that presentation that day. And then I found that I like writing, so then I kept doing it. Uh, the next question is, does anyone help you come up with ideas? Uh, not the initial idea 
for a story, uh, unless it's accidental, like the speaker who was talking about failure and continuing to try um, even when you don't succeed at something the first time. Um, but I do have writer friends that help me brainstorm a solution if I'm stuck in a story, I'm not sure what direction it should go, something like that. We do help one another um, with ideas like that. A um, couple of questions here were related or had the same answer anyway because uh, they were, what was your first book you wrote, what's your first book to be published, and what's your favorite book? And all of those are the same. Chained was the first book that I wrote. It's the first book I've had published. I hope there will be many more. And so obviously that's my favorite book right now. Easy answer for that one. But I think authors who've written many books have trouble answering that what's your favorite book question. I don't think they could really pick a favorite one. But for me, that's an easy one for now. And next question I think is one I have not had before. It was, what do you want your books to mean to kids? Really, uh, it's not something I think about when I sit down to write a book. So whatever a book means for any reader is fine with me. I, my goal is to write a great story, and I hope that a reader will enjoy that story. And if some people you know, read the book and it's just an enjoyable story to them, that's great. Uh, other readers might make a connection with a character or something that happens in the book, and that's great too. And I think even the same reader on a repeated reading would get something different out of a book. I know that's happened to me. I might see things in a book on a second reading that I had not seen the first time. So really, whatever a reader gets from a book is fine with me. And the next question was, do you find anything hard when writing a book? And yes, there are many hard things about writing a book, uh, but I, I do enjoy the process anyway, even though it's not always an easy one. And I know a question like this came up during our visit, and I uh, answered at that time that revising is difficult. That was the first answer that came to my mind then. Uh, but then the more I thought about it, um, at least with revising, you have something to work with. And really, for me, the blank page is harder if I'm yeah, thinking of a story or I've written uh, some events and I don't know what happens next, that's the challenge for me is trying to figure that out and staring at the blank page and trying to figure out what would make sense in the story. Um, in that case, I just have to uh, write it and you know work through it that way, um, write down some ideas of what might happen and see if those work. Sometimes I have too many ideas going on and again, I just have to write a little about each one and see what works for the story. Um, and then I could fix it later. The, the draft will not be that great the first time I write it. And, but I let that get in my way sometimes. I'm thinking the story in my head is not going to be as good uh, when it's on paper when I write it down. Um, and it won't be on a first draft, but I have to just write it and get it out there and then I can take all the time I need to fix it later on. But speaking of revising, since I did bring it up during our visit as one of the challenging things about writing a book, I like to show this to students because I think of this like a giant graded paper. This was one revision that I got back after a publisher decided to make change into a published novel. So when you get your own work back that you've, you've worked hard on and you get it back and it has some red writing on it, um, things that you need to correct still, things that you need to revise. Don't feel bad. Just know that any book you see on the shelf, the author has gone through the same thing for every book. And this is one revision. It is, it is the whole manuscript with writing on every page and writing front and back um, on all these sticky notes. And there are things crossed out. There are things added. There are suggestions for how to make the book better. And so this is after I did a lot of my own revising, before I ever you know, showed it to an editor, um, after I did revisions with the help of other writer friends, and after a publisher said, yes, I love it, let's make it into a book. And I got something like this, uh, I think two more times, um, less writing on it each time. And I think up until the time the book was printed, it seems we were still making some small edits to it. And even after I read the published book, I still saw things I wanted to go back and edit if only I could. So that seems never ending, but it's all done to make the book better. So that helps to keep that in mind. All revisions are done to make the book even better. And that was the last of the questions that were sent in after the school visit. 
But if you've had questions that have come up since then, or those of you who are watching, if you have any questions, then feel free to leave those in the comments or send me an email. And I could certainly do another video if you readers, teachers, and librarians like me answering the students' questions on a video like this. Until then, thank you for sending those in, and thank you for reading.